Welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines beat Purdue 45-23. Play. The Wolverines beat Purdue 45-23. Hey, Coach Moeller, you got to be proud of the kids coming back, winning on the road after a tough loss against Wisconsin. Well, Jim, I am very much so, and uh, I think it was very important. Uh, a lot of things to look at. Uh, delighted the way the offense particularly moved the ball on several occasions, and a little disappointed with the defense, but the one thing we didn't do that we wanted to accomplish, no balls over the head. No big plays for Purdue. Offensively, your first possession well, you went right after him and started with Wheatley around the perimeter. Well, Wheatley has a good run here. Uh, and, I, uh, you know, we went to an unbalanced line there, and it worked out well. I think it was a good call, and Tyrone took it from there. And then we come right back on the screen pass to uh, uh, Bianca Batuka, which, which is a good game. And we're trying to mix it up there. Mix it up and go back to Wheatley up the middle. Nice cut right there by Tyrone. Excellent cut. Excellent cut, Jim. And these are the things. I think Wheatley is really getting in the groove right now. And here's a pass play. You use play action. Great decision here by Todd Collins. Right. And the reason we did this, Jim, is, you know, watching film and looking what Purdue did to Notre Dame. Notre Dame had a tremendously hard time scoring in the, the goal line situation, so we thought we would throw when we got down there early. This is what I think is, again, a concern of yours. Purdue is able to run the football pretty well against you. Right. Watson uh, bounces off there. Then I'll start their big uh, fullback comes in here. Has some good runs. And, Jim, those you don't want to happen. But at the same time, again, don't give up the big play. Now when we get down there, we got to shut them out. Now we shouldn't be backing off much. We should be stopping them. They come around there. Then they come out. This is too easy here. Too easy. And Purdue tied it up in the first quarter. Even though the weather conditions were a little rough in West Lafayette, with a lot of rain, the field was in decent shape. Purdue able to move the ball, and then you got to come back and go after him again offensively. Jim, the field was in excellent shape, and I'll, I think you see this here when Wheatley runs again up inside, and he picks up about 15. Collins comes back. He passes to Amani right here on a big, uh, big out cut here. Amani darn near got loose there to get up the sidelines and things. And using Biakovituka and Wheatley, uh, giving them a rest, and, and Biakovituka really responds well. A great play here by Collins to get out of a problem. Biakovituka does the rest. Great individual play, really, by Todd Collins. Jim, Todd Collins, excellent quarterback. And Biakovituka, as you mentioned, gives us the offset or the change of pace, I guess, with Wheatley. Tyrone really running hard there, getting down to close to the goal line, then going in on the next play. You were happy to see Wheatley running hard. I mean, he's getting back to what the Wheatley should have been a long time ago. Right. Unfortunately, the injury early in the year, I think, took a little bit out of him. But uh, he's a very fine back today. 14-7 at that point, And uh, uh, you're able to get Purdue stopped. And you come back. And Todd Collins, again, good protection on play action, able to hit Mercury Hayes, who had a big day against Purdue. Yes, and, and Todd, uh, you hit 15 passes uh, out of 18. You've had a great day. And here, uh, John Ritchie, a young fullback here, goes bust the play outside. An off-tackle play, really, that he bounced the outside. We got penalized two times. We had to come on, and Remy kicked the field goal and fortunately made it. 17-7 at this point in the second quarter. And with the way Purdue's moving the ball, though, this is not a safe lead. No, and right now is when you'd like to have your defense. Here he gets out and scrambles. This is the worst play defensively, I think, of the game when you let the quarterback scramble on about third and nine. Well, in the first half, they're six of seven on third down conversions, and that's something you just can't have. Right, and uh, they should be in a 40% range is good. Then here a guy catches the ball, picks up a couple blocks, goes to the outside, Thornton there makes a good reception and it's going to lead to their touchdown here you are third and nine again that happens again right we get a good rush here we don't contain him he gets outside for a second team quarterback jim i will say this this young man played very well played well indeed and then they go wide to hagan's almost get him for a loss but just don't have enough speed big loss this should may have knocked him back to the seven yard line but we didn't make it happen. Those are the plays in the future, Jim, we have to make. 17-14 at this point. It's still dicey, but you called this drive before halftime critical for this game. Very critical. <coughs> Wheatley goes Excuse up the me. middle on the draw, gets 12. Then you come back and a great play here by Todd Collins. Excellent play. Decision, throwing it to uh, Mercury on a short yardage situation, third and two. He checked at the line the on that one, didn't he? Right. 
Right, then here he comes back and he throws the out and up to Mercury Hayes, who comes in and makes a great catch down to about the three yard line. Those two plays by Todd and the receivers and Mercury were outstanding. Then right before half with 20, I think 24 seconds, he throws a nice soft patch pass to uh, Shea and he makes a great play on it. 24-14 at halftime. You got to be concerned with the way they're moving the ball on you at this point, right? Right. But responding by our offense, I felt good. And the other thing, I didn't want any big plays. I knew they'd rush the ball some. I would have guessed going into this game, Purdue would probably scored 14 points on us. Well, it was 24-14 at halftime, and uh, Wolverines were not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. We'll be back and take a look at the second half, but first we hear from the quarterback who was on target big time against Purdue. We've been trying to uh, get the ball down the field on the first drive and just roll it down there. And, uh, you know, Tyrone so with some great runs, so again, get some great blocks, and uh, we mixed it up a little, and down we go. When, it, when the guy got hurt last week, Trev's good that he was going to come out and he was scrambling. A lot of times it seemed like he was looking to scramble. He wouldn't look at the receivers. He was just running back there. He'd get scared and he'd run out. And, but the first, the first half, that kind of killed us. But we sort of grabbed him in the second half. Tony Anderson talking about the Michigan victory over Purdue. 24-14, the Wolverines have the lead at half. But you've got to be a little concerned. You kick off to them. You really haven't stopped them much in the first half. Right. They had one fumble that helped us, Jim. We stopped them once. And now the goal was... We're going to shut them down. We're going to get the ball and go ahead and score. And they have a drive here and go down and kick a field goal. And, you know, with their running game, it surprised me a little bit. I thought a good call by Coletto. First play of their possession, they throw it and get a good first down. Right. They get about 20 yards. Here we come with a safety blitz we just missed. Yeah, that blitz has got to get home or you get in trouble. And Purdue uh, made you pay for it. And here you are coming back again. Good scramble away from trouble by the quarterback. Big problem here because they, you let him outside, he hits an open defender, and if you give him too much time against his own coverage, that's going to happen to you. But we got to keep the guy inside. We do stop him, make him settle for a field goal. At that point, it's 24-17, and still the crowd at Purdue very much into the game. And this is a key drive in the second half, your first possession after they score. Right. Uh, they come up with a heavy defense here. Uh, he hits Mercury Hayes in the flat, which is a big play. And Jim, in this drive, we're going to overcome three major penalties, go down and score, and I think take about eight minutes off the clock, and I think that was key. And there Todd is hitting Imani on a big play right there. Good production here from Eddie Davis, who comes in. Eddie comes in. He, he can always give you the good shallow cut. He's a strong, dependable runner and did a good job there. Talk about big plays. How about this one? Todd Collins having a lot of pressure, presence on where the receiver would be, throwing the ball early, and then Imani making a fine catch after being bumped around by two people, and then Wheatley takes it in. Important score because Purdue had just scored. You come back, use eight minutes, and go up 31-17. And now you move to the fourth quarter. Purdue with the football. This is a big play, too. Well, this about iced it right here, Jim. Rob Sweat goes back. Makes a great interception for a young linebacker and then runs it down the sideline. Puts us in scoring position and we do just that. And you get the ball back and again I thought from the offensive standpoint you get the ball off the turnover and you make points out of it. Right that's the key. We didn't do that in the first uh, half as you remember we had a uh, fumble recovery and then we had a punt right afterwards but there Todd hit Mercury Hayes over the middle then we come right back with Bianca Batuka up the middle for 15. Strong running right there. Excellent cutting. And then you go with Eddie Davis, and he goes in for the score. Right. He gets a good cut here and, and takes a sweep in again. And I was really happy with what we did inside the 10-yard line because they've been a great goal line defensive team. You've been struggling offensively scoring touchdowns. You mentioned that after the game that it was important. Jim, the two previous weeks, we only had two touchdowns in two games. You've been settling for more field goals than you'd like, and in this game against Purdue, you did a lot better. Right. Watson here breaks uh, the couple tackles, has a good cutback. That young man's going to be a good back in this league. They come back, and they do get into the end zone here and score, although it's awful close. Makes it 38-23. Uh, but on your next possession, they are unable to stop you, and this really puts it away. Right. Uh, this helps. And again, here we go off outside again with Wheatley making a good run here. Then Bianca Batuka comes in, has a great run. 
I think about a 45 yarder on a toss sweep. It gets some good blocking there, but makes a couple guys miss and gets to the outside. Does a good job getting downfield, and then Bianca Matuka wraps it up as he goes in. And here's a great little run as he just powers his way for a guy that, you know, doesn't look that big. He's got some good power. The final, 45-23. And I think the play of the week for Norwegian Cruise Line this week, it's got to be the interception because at this point, you're only up 14. They're driving, and this kind of seals it. Right. We get a little pressure there, and he, the guy throws it early, and Rob Sweat makes a key interception and really turns the, turns the game around. You need turnovers with your defense. It really helps you, particularly when you can capitalize on them with your offense. And while you're not totally pleased with the defense, that was a big play turned in by your defense. Uh, talk to me about where you're headed with the defense and what kinds of things you want to accomplish well, in the next couple of weeks. Well, I think the main thing, again, is giving up the big play. Usually, if you can make people march the ball down the field, you'll make them settle for a field goal on occasion. We didn't do that completely. We had a couple guys banged up. There's no question about that. Takes a little bit away. We had to change our defensive strategy this week again. So we're looking at a defensive team that I got to believe the next two weeks is just going to get better and better as we come down the road. Hopefully that's true because it's going to get tough as the road goes on. By the way, in the game, Tyrone Wheatley's touchdowns. He becomes a career leader in touchdowns at Michigan. And Remy Hamilton breaks a season record in field goals. So big day all around for the Wolverines. We'll be back. We'll take a look at a couple of Wolverine receivers. But first, we hear from one of today's record breakers. At a 5-3 uh, and three season, it doesn't really look too good. You know, we want to finish up 9-3. and three. And, uh, you know, it, sal it doesn't salvage everything, but, you know, it kind of gets the ball going for the rest of the season. The success of the Michigan passing game this year has been vital to the team's offensive production. Certainly, Todd Collins is a key to that, but so are wideouts Amani Toomer and Mercury Hayes. This tandem has been outstanding, and they've changed roles a little from a year ago. Last season, Mercury was the big play guy, but this year, Amani seems to be getting bigger plays. As far as they're concerned, who gets the big plays doesn't really matter. You get the ball to the receiver, that's open. Vital to the team's offensive production. Certainly, Todd Collins is a key to that, but so are wideouts Amani Toomer and Mercury Hayes. This tandem has been outstanding, and they've changed roles a little from a year ago. Last season, Mercury was the big play guy, but this year, Amani seems to be getting bigger plays. As far as they're concerned, who gets the big plays doesn't really matter. You get the ball to the receiver that's open, play a man, man to man, one-on-one. -on -one, so, I mean, they've been kind of bracket, <clears throat> bracketing me this year and everything, but it's just like the different, you know, the formations and the defense is the reason why money getting a lot, <clears throat> a lot of the balls. So, I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, that you have to live with. I think that, I mean, if you double cover one of us, it's just going to open it up for the other um, receiver. And, uh, it's, you know, you can't really shut one of us out of, out of any particular game, so. One thing about both of these guys you notice right away, they aren't ball hogs. They understand that balance on offense is the key to winning, and that means the running game is important to them also. I think we just go about doing our thing. I mean, before every game, we, uh, we get together, you know, with the rest of the receivers, and we just, you know, we, because uh, I think a lot of teams this year have tried to put uh, some, some heavy defenses up the middle, and it has opened up the pass a lot. So I think that, you know, we, we realize this, and we get together before every, uh, every game, and uh, we talk about, you know, that we're going to have to make some plays you know, to open up the running game for our offense. You know, philosophy of football is you have to balance it out. You open the run with the pass. You open the pass with the run. So, I mean, if you balance it out 50-50, I think any ball club would be de pretty decent, you know, if you have the receivers and the, you know, quarterback and the uh, backs to do that. You know, if you have that balance out offense like that, I mean, I think you'd be a great ball club. Toomer has an added job to his receiving duties. He returns punts. And the biggest return of his career came against Illinois this year. I knew it was, uh, it was coming sooner or later. I was just hoping that the coach would keep me back there, you know, returning them because uh, I knew uh, a couple more weeks of 2.2 uh, yards of return, I wouldn't be back there much longer. So I, I just, uh, you know, had to, had to do it. I had to come up with a play. Monty Toomer and Mercury Hayes been coming up with plays all year. It's nice to have a tandem of receivers like that out there. 
Right, and the thing you got to realize, Jim, sometimes they do double one guy, and so the other guy has to, to come aboard. And I think the running game also is a great mixture, but uh, they've been good on many, many occasions, and we had to keep them in that light. Keep them in that. And you know the other thing they do is they get downfield and block pretty well, too. They're, that's kind of a Michigan tradition. Well, I think that's expected, and you really know as a wide receiver, the one thing you want to do is when the opportunity comes to block your guy, it's knock him down. Because then they give you looser coverage. If you go and you don't block, then they'll stay tight on you all day. But when they stay tight on you all day in a running play and you chop their legs out from underneath them, then they back off a little bit. Yeah, Mercury Hayes and Amani Tumor are two of the players on Michigan's team you can honor this year by attending the University of Michigan football bus. This